Well, the late 90s were fairly quiet, to be honest, in, in our area. And we were still at a phase when there weren't there any private businesses to invest in. We actually created a couple of private businesses. In China, we also joint ventured with uh, state-owned enterprises, which was not a great lucrative way to proceed. Um, so it was a tough, it was actually a tough time. The thing just started bubbling again around the late 90s, I think, where we started to see people coming in, replicating uh, U.S. business models in China for the first time. And that's where, you know, I met first uh, Xiaoyi Bo, who started EachNet, who came to see us, uh, I think it was like 99 or 2000, and I'd been living in Shanghai. And so it was a revelation to me what was going on in terms of eBay. You know, I didn't really know about eBay. I lived in China where we were battling it out with equity, equity sign-up for an equity joint ventures, sorry, <laughs> principal form of investment. So the, you know, the activity outside of any kind of collaboration with state enterprises was fairly new. But once that took off, um, all kinds of things started happening. So when I first got started in venture capital, it was because of a relationship I had in Japan uh, in the early, late 1980s. I met Masayoshi Son from SoftBank and we became friends. Then in 1995, when he was setting up SoftBank's operations in the U.S. in a more formal way, he had the idea of running a venture capital firm. So we played around the golf, and after the round of golf, I went to his room, and his room was filled with spreadsheets on his 100-year plan for SoftBank, and part of that plan was a venture capital fund. So during the course of that discussion, he asked me if I was interested in running that, and uh, November 1995 is, how I, is when I became a venture capitalist. So in 99, um, I came to China and helped Chauncey Shea set up SoftBank China Venture Capital. And that was SoftBank's corporate money that it wasn't a fund, it was just money from SoftBank corporate that Chauncey was deploying. Then in 2000, right around the time that the crash was happening, so I had created a joint venture for Cisco Japan when I was at Cisco. Now I'm on the SoftBank side. So Cisco bought SoftBank out of its position in the joint venture. Part of that buyout was a commitment of $650 million to a fund called the SoftBank Asia Infrastructure Fund or SAFE Partners. So for the first year I ran SAFE and hired Andy Yan in 2001 to come in and, and run that on a formal basis. So that was right at the beginning of what I'd call the institutionalization of venture capital in China. The first fund was, was $100 million. and the, the old asset we managed at SAICC and uh, turned over. Some investors decided to take their uh, investment uh, and not to roll over. The one that we roll over is about $65 million. so we got about $165 million at UAM uh, to begin with. Their, their institutional backing, the, the four, primarily for institutional investors at the beginning and uh, GIC was the one behind uh, behind it and the GIC have a strategic view uh, probably that was the, one of the reasons to get into uh, CICC to begin with so they were continue to supporting uh, us to help us to swing off as, as, as an anchor investor for our fund and, 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 the, and the small shareholder of the General partner. Uh, so, and then uh, Capital Z, which was the Zurich uh, insurance uh, sponsor business fund of funds. So they were they were there. Up Invest uh, was uh, early investor when we were at the CSEC, and uh, so they were very happy with early investment with us. And they were anchoring our fund. And, and IFC, IFC being a financial, you know, development institution, and seeing that emerging China uh, private equity market, and uh, they were early supporter. At the beginning, we were at the right time for uh, private business uh, in China. They were at the early stage, uh, but they have uh, on a very uh, fast growth track. This is a particular tool in the consumer brand related business. So if you look at our early investment, Mengil, Leaning, Fox Media, and later on, Xuanhui, Bai Li, and uh, 
you know, there are, there are 15, 20 of them. Later on, you know, when we invest, they were small and valued at a few hundred million, maybe less a billion dollar valuation. Now they are all multi-billion dollar uh, businesses. We continue to evolve in their growth in several rounds later around the investment. Now some of them are big enough to get into uh, uh, global uh, and they, you know, like, you know, that's a later, the cart, you know, if you look for the first five years, is primarily financing their growth and help them into a structure so they can list it in uh, international stock exchange in Hong Kong or uh, in the US. We helped launch Fungbo at the fund Seiyuan. So he and his brother had done New Margin with Eric, uh, Eric uh, Neil Lee before. And then in 19, 2005 is when I moved to China because that's when it became quite obvious that the institutionalization was going to occur and the opportunity China represented was roughly the equivalent of what the U.S. represented. And it was the first time there was another market where you could legitimately look and say, not just in one sector, but across very many sectors, the China market would be roughly the equivalent of the U.S. for venture capital. I would say that two things happened. One was when the some of the major U.S. firms came into the market. So you had NEA combining with Greylock to do Northern Light. You had Sequoia hiring Neil Shen. Um, Andy had grown the safe platform into something the IDG had started to expand. And you had a couple IPOs. So you had Tencent in the market, even though the market cap was relatively low. You had Baidu in the market. Um, Sina had gone public. Um, Alibaba had not, but the Taobao launch had drawn everyone's attention into what was happening with uh, the potential of electronic commerce in China. And people started to realize that China was going to bypass fixed line infrastructure and the entire country was going to be built on mobile. So that was the first wave. And that's when you also had the first, the Princetons, uh, some of the other major institutional investors come to China in a meaningful way, in 2005, 2006. 2007 and 8, it was more just the basic building blocks of the industry and the infrastructure. Then in 2009 and 10, the RMB funds started to launch. So that created a domestic pool of capital because the listing requirements had been relaxed for quite a few companies. And you had the second board, you had the Shenzhen board, you had the China exchange. So you suddenly had liquidity within domestic currency. So coming out of that, the 2010-11 timeframe is where you really had an explosion of China's venture capital industry really moving on to the world stage at a, at a large scale. To the extent now, China does as much in a quarter as Europe does in a year. Well, we certainly didn't think that could grow this big uh, 15 years ago. I, I think uh, Jojen and I were talking when we first spin off. We were talking about our ultimate size was one billion. Uh, that was the dream or the plan then. Uh, yeah, we were uh, surprised or very happily see that China probably has grown so big. I think there are there are reasons if we look at it, you know, backward today. Uh, China uh, primarily funded their economic growth by debt, indirect financing. There were lack of equity financing. Uh, in various of the business growth. This is particularly true for private businesses because the bank like state-owned enterprise because that's safer. And the capital market developed in China has been constrained with various things. The IPO wasn't really completely market-based, so they're on and off. So that was like, it's not very reliable. So there's a need for equity. If IPO market doesn't provide sufficient equity, the private equity come in to fill the gap. We stayed out of China for quite a few years because again, asset prices outside of China were cheaper than in China. And then you know, after 2000, we went back to China market. Uh, China has come a long way because at that time there were not many big deals, not many buyout deals. 
but now China market I feel has much more matured.